All right, welcome to episode number five of the Jake Blanchard podcast. I am honored today uh, to be joined by Adam McGuire. Adam, uh, you may be familiar with. Uh, he is a voice over the airways all across the Treasure Valley uh, as a DJ at 100.3 The X. Uh, he is also avidly involved uh, in the local and national gaming community. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going we're gonna to learn a little bit about Adam, and then Adam is going to blow our minds uh, <laughs> when it comes to the world of esports, its evolution, uh, and this, this uh, tidal wave. Uh, yeah. of new leagues, professional and collegiate alike. Uh, so Adam, welcome to the podcast. Excited to have you today. Uh, dude, seriously, I have been looking forward to this uh, since we first sat down to have the conversation about getting, setting it up, dude. So seriously, thank you for having me and really excited with what we're going to dive into today. All right. Thanks, Adam. Hey, well, first off, why don't you give uh, folks a little bit of background about yourself? I mean, you are sure. a broadcaster. You've been on the radio for a long time. How did you get into that? Uh, ironically enough, an open casting call just out of high school. I was still in high school. One of our local top 40 stations were looking for an intern. I walked on in. I said, look, I'm giving up college to chase this dream. Uh, I just wanted to be an entertainer. I didn't, I, I kind of knew that was going to be where I ended up. Uh, I was a drama kid all throughout high school, things of that nature. Uh, walked in, nailed the interview process and never looked back. I had my first internship before I actually graduated high school. Was there for about a year, took some time off to kind of reorient my life as an 18 year old you know how it is um and i've been with uh kqxr boise 100.3 the x for oh god 12 years now i'm old I'm, I'm old now from a little baby to a, a full-grown man now <laughs> well i know and we've known each other start. uh through the years man you've been at uh you know i'm, I'm an avid uh, uh metalhead uh yep. big rock fan i go to a lot of concerts uh, obviously not in the last right. six months but <laughs> we when concerts to. are going on i know we've bumped into each other a lot um, absolutely you know, what, what's been some of your favorite experiences, you, you know, being a, uh, a personality there at 100.3 The X? You know, and this is going to sound super cheesy, but I was given my job by the people. Uh, it was a voting process when it came to actually getting the job, the casting couch, as they called it. Um, and so for me, it was kind of like a Batman vow to like protect Gotham, but I wanted to make sure all of my listeners were always taken care of. They gave me something that I wanted, needed, desired. Uh, and the only thing I could do to pay that back was like to make them proud. You know, that sounds kind of weird. So I love when I run into people like you or individuals I, you know, don't have daily interactions with me like, hey, I, I heard you talking about something random obscure i connected with it it made me laugh it made me feel something um i like the people and i'm not talking the superstars which sometimes they're awesome sometimes you know maybe not but the every man average joe individual who gives me even an hour of their time and enjoys it at the same point so that's that's my favorite part sure the free concerts are neat and the you know backstage pass to high five a band member or something is always a pleasure but my joy and the reason I have this job is, is because of the people. That is awesome. You know, the, the reason I wanted to have you today, um, besides that you're awesome, uh, oh, thank, oh, thank you. Oh, thank is you. To, to talk a little bit about esports. Now, yeah. I saw, and I can't remember if it was two years ago, maybe a year and a half, maybe three years. I, you know, timeline kind of uh, alludes of me here. Um, but all of a sudden, I saw images of you with a headset on, like mm -hmm. talking about, video games and i'm like man what is going on with this and then i started to look into it and i realized like this is a really big thing it's a it's a it's a wave that i definitely missed you know i was an n64 right. kid growing up i got right. a little bit into the computer games like the sims right. came out and got i got a lot oh, of people yeah. like me introduced and then rosebud I played, like, exclamation point oh, yeah. colon. <laughs> and then as far as the uh you know, the, uh, what the W A S D Wazda. Kind of, uh, Wazda Wazda kind of baby. Game. <laughs> it was like tribes, tribes too. like, yeah. Games like that. Um, oh, we're civil, going back dude. Civilization. And then, you know, early two thousands, I just kind of, I just kind of fell out and sure. played some console games in college still do, you know, FIFA stuff yeah. like that with friends. Right. But, um, I had no idea that esports is even close to as big as it is. It is big money. It is big business. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have had your finger on this pulse for a long time. What happened? Sure. 
Like what, how are uh, we here? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give you my funny answer and then I'm gonna break it down even further. The funny answer is that all of the individuals who were like, you know, double our age and have all of the money and power in the, in the broadcast world went, wait a minute, video games are actually cool. We should capitalize on this. And then that's what happened. I, I okay. knew it was going to quite literally take uh, a, a worldwide pandemic for ESPN to be showing like League of Legends finals. I knew it was going to come to something like that. But the real situation is, it's become accessible to everybody, whether you're a 12 year old kid smashing out some rocket league, which is just rocket cars and a soccer ball uh, to individuals like me, who've been playing league of legends for eight, nine years, you know, stuff like that all the way up to, uh, I had my first trip. I went to the league of legends world finals in Detroit or not world finals, the North American finals in Detroit. And the, the place was packed. Little Caesars Arena in Detroit was packed to the gills with a bunch of nerd types like myself losing their collective minds while these other individuals played on stage. It's no, the easiest way to comprehend what happened is traditional sports. One day there was just a handful of people running around doing something. Somebody noticed and next thing you know, it's on prime time. And so uh, with the growth of, you know, certain leagues, companies realizing what they're capable of doing and just the excitement behind it. Not everyone can go run and, and catch a football Ball, a lot of people can wazda up especially after you know learning i mean again i've been playing some of these games for 10 years you mentioned the n64 i started casting like neighborhood tournaments for street fighter 2 on the super nintendo way back in the day you know uh that's where this started for me and now next thing i know i'm getting invited out to dreamhack atlanta uh you know it, it's crazy so what happened a recognition you know yeah. some old guy was like man my son hasn't left his room in 20 hours why? And then he realized, oh, here's the credit card statement as well. Holy crap. <laughs> right. So, you know, let's, uh, so there's folks like me that have a very high level general knowledge of this ecosystem that sure. uh, there's this thing called Twitch. Uh, oh yeah. There's these people called screamcasters. They're shoutcasters, these, right? Or shoutcasters, excuse me. <laughs> there's, Scream though. It's cool. <laughs> you know, there's leagues, um, that exist at, at amateur, professional, collegiate yep. level. Uh, and then there's games inside those leagues. And you named some of them, Rocket League, which is like a mm -hmm. ball and cars. I have no yep. idea what Overwatch is, but apparently that is a really big thing. Uh, so maybe just start there. Start kind of at, at the beginning. Help us uh, get acclimated to, to the, the yeah. lexicon. So as far as esports is concerned, if there is a game that's got multiplayer in it, chances are there is some kind of scene for it. Okay. Whether that's in your, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in your local mom and pop shop running Smash Brothers tournaments, you know, the, the fighting game there, or all the way up to the top end. So uh, it just kind of depends. I mean, some teams have players in a bunch of games. Some teams only focus one game. Um, so like if you take a look at teams like Echo Fox or something like that, they have a lot of fighters, uh, Street Fighter, Tekken, uh, you name it. That's kind of where they excel. So Team Liquid, uh, my guys right there who I would live and die for, um, you know, excel in League of Legends, CSGO, Dota. Uh, again, any game that has some kind of online privilege or a head-to-head -head component, there is a 90% chance there's some kind of league. Again, okay. it just depends on where it's at. So that, that, that's been a lot of my confusion. So like, you know, when, when people get together to play football, the sure. game is football, right? Right. When we're talking about esports, I mean, we are really talking about hundreds. Maybe even. Right. Or is well, it's it more the categorization? If you ask somebody, hey, what sport do you play? They're going to tell you what they, they specialize in or what, you know, I'm a football player, basketball player. When right. somebody asks me, uh, you know, what kind of caster I am, I say, oh, I'm typically a League of Legends caster, Rocket League caster. But you throw any game in front of me, it really boils down to the X's and O's that you see in traditional sports. Okay, this guy's going here. He's looking for that. Here's the strategy. And that's my job as a shoutcaster. Uh, it's like doing the John Madden over the action that is happening in front of you to, you know, use traditional sports. Um, and so it just, it kind of, you know, depends on where you're at you know Fortnite is a huge thing that exploded as far as this year is concerned we had a 16 year old kid win like what five million dollars playing Fortnite. like it's insane oh, he's the youngest oh. player with it's like it's multiple million dollars playing this game granted he's the best in the world that, that and he deserves it um but there's you know it just depends on what you specialize in so like myself i'm not i i'm a fighter by trade i love tekken i love street fighter you know the dragon ball z fighters you name it if there's two people punching each other in the face chances are 
I love it, but I have spent more time as a League of Legends player, and I know the ins and outs even more. So it's just yeah. like traditional sports. Hey, I'm an athlete. Well, what kind of athlete? Oh, I specialize in, in League of Legends. I'm an ADC main, which means nothing to you guys. But it, it's so parallel. It's just that personal immersion to kind of understand it, if that makes any sense. Okay. And, and so when we look at, you know, Twitch really opened up the world of um, oh, yeah. gaming. I, I, I would say, was there something before Twitch? I mean, this is just my, my extra there, there was a couple of like Justin TV and stuff like that. There okay. were, you know, things that led to Twitch. And then of course, you know, YouTube hopped in on that bandwagon as well. Twitch uh, allowed every person in the world to entertain. Much like I was looking to do in my early days, it has now opened the floodgates for people who aren't even good at games. They're just entertaining and they've got millions of subscribers and followers. And that just, it shows you just because of the medium alone, everybody liking what they're doing or, or saying uh, has allowed them to succeed. I'm, I, am, I am a Twitch affiliate, not partner. There's two tiers or whatever. So I do make uh, like 10 bucks a month on my subscriptions. Uh, to make it to that next level is a super huge grind, but anyone can turn their, their camera on and, and play their game and still feel like a superstar. And so I think that's what opened it up. And it also opened up for scouting, which is crazy. You, you think about scouting in college into the major leagues, the same thing is happening. They're looking at those competitive ladders for like League of Legends. This guy's the number one ADC in the region. Maybe we offer him a college, scholar, a college scholarship or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, so it's, so it's here, insane, dude. So then there's people out there who are broadcasting, but, you know, obviously with all these subscribers, there must be an appetite out there for people just to view and to watch. And I, and mm -hmm. I imagine that comes from people trying to get better, like watching mm -hmm. and listening for strategies. And then also there being sure. some entertainment component associated with this. Yep. And that just boils down to much like when you're listening to radio or something. I, 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 sorry, I draw a lot of parallels just to kind of give you a mind's Please. eye of something you might be a little bit more tangible. But it's like when I'm on air, I'm sure you've heard Metallica 6,000 times. Why are you still listening to them? Like, to be completely candid with you. Well, it's because I'm here. It's because you think I might have tickets or I'm going to say something stupid or I might play the song that you requested 20 minutes ago. You never know. And so, yeah. I, so for me personally, when I watch streams, um, I am looking for the next tier. The pros that we're talking about will stream on their off days. And you can even in that little chat box, you know, hey, double lift. Why did you decide to go this item instead of this item at this point in the game? And, you know, uh, you can throw a couple of bucks at that message and it raises in priority, if you will. And that's kind of where oh, the monetization wow. of, of Twitch and stuff and the subs as well. You sub, you get little icons that you can use in any Twitch stream anywhere. Uh, you get privy access to, you know, certain things depending on the individual. Um, like it's, it's, that's where, you know, the Twi Twitch side of, of things came down, but the person behind the keyboard in front of the camera or the mic for that matter is why individuals are there and it's not so much a foreign idea it's just a new medium you know we grew up with people telling us to go outside and not play video games look at me now mom <laughs> look at me mom now for sure man and yeah like i was saying earlier i completely miss this i completely missed yeah. uh the boat all the way through and i you know prepping for this um you know i looked up some games i looked up some um you know i watched some casts uh, to try to get, uh, um, you know, acclimated to it. It's so strange to me, um, mm -hmm. but in a good way, right? This is yeah. something that there's a lot of money behind. And this is people's passions that were in, in basements, if you will. Maybe yeah. they're still in basements, but it is being <laughs> broadcasted absolutely all over the world. So right. you uh, got affiliated with Boise State University very early yeah. on in this process. And maybe you could talk about that because that's when I started to realize that what you Absolutely. were doing was a little more. And then I saw Boise State invested heavily and actually has a oh, pretty good esports team. So could you talk <laughs> about that? Absolutely. My pleasure, man. And of course, big shout outs to uh, Boise State University and uh, of course, Chris Haskell, uh, who is the head of this whole operation. Uh, it all started passion projects. We were kind of talking about that earlier. I was just casting on the weekends. I would host on Twitch. Hey, the first 10 people to get a hold of me, I'll throw you into a game. One random person on the winning team is going to get like a $5 card kind of thing. And I'd spend tw you know, 20, 40 bucks on a weekend every two weeks to do this. And it was just kind of an underground thing. I called them weekend scrambles. Um, and the next thing I know, uh, Boise Lan, uh, my buddy Constantine gets a hold of me. Uh, I don't know if you remember LAN parties from the 90s. They still happen. They're just a little bit different. Um, and he said, hey, look, you know, uh, I'm having a couple of tournaments. Would you feel comfortable just coming in and trying it? And I was like, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I'm already doing this on the weekends. Go for it. Uh, that happened for a few years. And then randomly out of nowhere, I had just had my son, Liam. 
I get a phone call from Chris over at Boise State, and he, I don't know how in the world he found out about me and my existence, and because there's no, there wasn't a radar. I was just some punk ass kid playing video games and talking about it on the weekends, you know? Um, and then Chris calls and he's like, Hey, rumor has it. You're the guy. I'm like, I don't know who you're talking to, but maybe. Yeah. And, uh, it started an unbelievably awesome relationship between myself and Boise state university. Uh, at the core, I'm what you would refer to as a freelance caster. So it doesn't matter the place. doesn't matter the game. So long as you know, the contract is correct, which doesn't necessarily mean money. Um, I'm there to, to yell about it, uh, to make it shine if you will. Um, and so what started is my specialty in league of legends, then grew into rocket league, which then, you know, grew into, Hey, I've got this spot that needs filled today. Can you make it in an hour? Like, sure. I'm going to be there. Um, and as far as the growth was concerned to kind of give you a solid idea, if you like subscribe to the Boise state Twitch, you can actually go back and see all of the old casts. We started in a room. I'm not even kidding you. Maybe no bigger than this. Like what's behind me right here. This is maybe, you know, five feet by 10 feet kind of situation. And, uh, it was like a closet. It literally was like a closet. It was hilarious. Green screen in the back. Oh God, it was awful. Um, and here we are three years later, they have a full fledged battle arena as they refer to it. The game pants arena, uh, just off of uh, Capitol, And it is a full fledged. I, I wish I would have brought up pictures. I, it is a full fledged arena there is seating for everyone to sit down the players play right there in front of you they have the screens up so you can watch and cheer um it's even getting to the point where people are coming to watch the games they bring their own cowbells they bring their own signs oh i love red hots he's amazing i love mid lane you know um and so you know it gets back into that the people who can't do are there watching the people who can and as far as money's concerned, but I've been flown out to Atlanta. Like I'm not a big ego guy, but I've been flown out to Atlanta to go cast. Never thought that would happen in a million years. Uh, Vegas, uh, again, on other people's dimes to come and scream about these games. And, and of course the information, I know what I'm talking about in most aspects. And so that's pivotal. But as far as the rise of just collegiate alone, Boise State's probably one of the top 25 in the nation. If not larger than that, I, I guess, as far as what they have put into their esports program and they're seeing, they're getting dividends from it as well. Even pulling former pros. Uh, I, I got to watch one of my favorite players, Quas, who used to play for Team Liquid, is now playing for Base State, I believe. And it was, it was crazy. Uh, a guy I worship the ground, he walks on it, basically. My Barry Bonds, if you will, yeah. went up against my top laner from a collegiate level, and it was pretty even. And so that shows you it's not even only the monetization that is exploding, it's the experience of these players. Like when you're watching the Olympics and some 14-year-old's doing back handspring flip de doos you're like, wow, at 15, I was playing with Pokemon cards. Like, I can't do, you know what I mean? So, yeah, for sure. Like, I love, I love how excited you are. Like, you just, you're just <laughs> flowing here for a second. I mean, that's what this podcast is all about, by the way. Sure. You know, I, I bring on businesses, I bring on passion projects. And for you to just go off like that for two or three minutes about uh, your experiences Sorry. and, you know, and, and reflecting, you know, reflecting on where it started and where it is today. Um, yeah. There's so much excitement for where esports is going. So maybe take yeah. us through that a little bit. Like, what what are you seeing? Where's where's the finger on the pulse of of uh, where esports is headed? It's only going to go up from here, man. Um, you know, we talk about uh, like AM FM radio, how AM's dead ish. Yeah. FM's going to be there because here comes satellite radio. Oh no! Uh, just for those keeping track, AM radio is still around despite you complaining about it for nearly forty <laughs> years at this point. Um, and so I think that is going to continually uh, and ex exponentially grow. It's the next thing. Again, the access alone is, is massive, um, and we have even started to see other companies try to jump in and fall flat on their face. You take a look at Mixer, uh, went so far as to pull away Ninja from Twitch, paying him X million dollars for playing Fortnite and, and, and being Ninja. Uh, that company planted. And then now he's back over at Twitch at probably a reduced rate, which is hilarious. Uh, but that said, I only anticipate it going up from here. And don't be surprised if like, uh, you know, you're starting to see um, television-based esports channels so like ven tv is one that just started here not too long ago i'm not sure if they're on air quite yet um but don't be surprised if you're seeing your, your local channels you know tune into your local college esports stream that's going on right now um yes again espn just showed the finals 
uh, not too long ago. I never, I never, I thought we would have to pay them ourselves in order to get that on TV. And so that should show you where it's going to go. It's only going to infect more minds, if you will. That's a weird way to put it, but it is a, a, an addictive kind of situation to, you know, everybody likes to be a fan of something. And so the more people who get connected to this, even my own mother was like, well, this Rocket League game looks fun. And then she got her hands on it. I was like, it's a lot harder than you guys make it look. <laughs> yes, I know, mother. But it goes to show you that from the small children to the adults, they're getting into this. Hey, my kid's, uh, uh, you know, scored 14 goals yesterday in his Rocket League game. What did your kid do? Oh, he's in juvie. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, well, it's, it's a whole new thing. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. I think that, you know, esports certainly has a, a stigma. I've got my lenses. I've got my glasses sure. on where it's like Absolutely. my son, I've got a seven-year-old son. If my son uh, was outside in the backyard saying, doing flips on the trampoline and kicking sure. soccer balls all day, I wouldn't be concerned. But if he was playing Rocket League for eight hours, I sure. might be. Let's talk about balance. Let's talk about perception. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, give some advice out there for people. People are going to listen. Um, they might be thinking about their down. kids, their family members. Like, what's up? Slow down. You are not going to become famous tomorrow. That's my big thing. So we were talking before we came on air. Um, I uh, am an individual that the life that I live being kind of in the spotlight from the radio to the, the casting world, it really took a mental toll on me. I was, I was working 16 to 18 hours a day between being here in studio and then I'd go home. I would try to grind out a couple games with the stream on. I mean, it literally got to a point where I had a, 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 a psychologist, I think is what you call him, tell me I need to put the controller up. And I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. I, this is my livelihood. I have to do this. And so what I learned is a pacing. Like, so what I was going to say, if you see your seven-year-old outside doing flips, trampoline, stuff like that, um, you're not going to be concerned. But if he's playing Rocket League for that amount of time, you might be until you walk in and say, hey, like, are you just clowning around or what's up? And he shows you, hey, dad, I'm top 150. And you're like, oh, crap. Okay, yeah. you've got a skill. Maybe we hone in on this. And then maybe, you know, we double check your homework and then you go, you know, practice a little bit. You know, you're not going to be upset if your kid's at baseball practice for two hours. So slow it down. You know, maybe only give them two hours, but make those two hours a good practice two hours. You know what I mean? Don't just let them go fudge around uh, for no reason. That's, that's concerning. But my biggest piece of advice to anyone ever from this to whatever it is, is slow the hell down you have plenty of time unless you're like a terminal cancer patient in which you've got the clock running you have all of the time in the world it took me 10 years to get where i am in radio to finally firmly be comfortable i was a one day a week guy they called me little baby adam because i just simply didn't exist now i'm a, a you know toot my own horn again a number one rated dj many many times you know but it and i wanted it today i wanted it now and then i burnt out and i thought i would never get it back and if you do that you may not, you know, yeah. you might take this passion project that you love so much and you're working so hard that one day you wake up and go, I'm done with it. I can't anymore. I just can't. And sometimes that's okay. But if you slow and steady it, you're going to be fine. I have an intern right now who's, who's wanting to become a caster who has sent it, who sent me hours of, of footage over this week. And I'm like, buddy, take a day off. Oh no, but I got to get it now. No, you don't. And in fact, you're just going to burn out your voice. You're going to, you know, regret what you're doing take a deep breath, go, go read a book. You know, I can't believe I'm saying it, <laughs> yeah. but like really take the time to get things figured out. It's not going to happen that's, tomorrow. That, you know, that's such an important message um, in the standpoint of if there are parents say that are worried about how much their kids are playing, I think they need to understand the intention of the game. Yeah. Like there are some people out there that have Michael Jordan work ethic, right? There, there's people yeah. who, who want to be the best. And as a parent, it's your job always to yeah. provide guidance, to provide for support, opportunities, those types of things. So you have to know what kind of gamer you have. I love that you said that because yeah. some people like myself, I was never like a top gamer. I like to kick back. I like to, you know, play around with the sticks and Madden. But like yeah. if I lost a game, it never really, it didn't really bother me that much. Oh, what's that like? Teach me the ways, man. <laughs> oh, well, I tell you what, it bothered me at the time. I mean, I've, right. I've certainly, uh, as a young man, uh, uh, got upset. But, you know, as I, as yeah. I reflect on it, you know, I, I didn't remember it the next day. I wasn't, you know, tore up about it. And I think, sure. you know, just like anything else, um, there's probably a lot of folks out there who, who might lose and uh, they think about it a lot. 
<laughs> there you go. Raising your hand. I am, right, a, I am a materialistic rager, man. That's one of those things I have to turn my mic off a lot because I know I'm going to say things I don't mean. Uh, you know, use soft words because you might have to eat them like a brick. All right. So, you know, we're, uh, we're just talking about gaming in general. Gaming took off. What was the game that like, you know, was it, was it, excuse my, uh, uh, my, my ignorance here. Is it Fortnite? Is it like what shot things up? Cause I heard so much about Fortnite. I was blown away. Right. I've seen like Minecraft. I don't know if that's people Twitch Minecraft. They probably, they probably Yeah. And then then see like, that was not so much competitive as it is like, Hey, look at what I built. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and there's a lot of cool like community things. So with, with Minecraft, Minecraft is a, well, a crafter. Uh, and so that one's you go and you punch trees and then you make a house out of the trees and then you punch some stones and now you're making a, a house out of stone instead of trees and it just gets better and better and better. It's a, it's a gaming genre, crafting, uh, terraria, stuff like that. So no real competitive situation there, but okay. more of a community deal. So like I can open up a server, you can come in, we can build a kick-ass castle and, uh, you know, uh, fight off some little scary dudes, some creepers and stuff like that. Um, but what started it, I still, to this day, can't figure it out. Um, I think the introduction of Evo, uh, the fighting tournament in Las Vegas that happens every year, it's literally the top 5, 10, 15 fighting games. Yeah. Uh, every player from you know Japan, Korea, uh, Europe, they all meet in this one place. Uh, started out kind of small, but then it exploded to where there was a circuit. They had five different places that you had to go in order to get qual. Oh my God, it was just, it was crazy. I want to say that was the earliest rendition of like, organized holy crap well, tournaments I, I remember some madden tournaments but those were like right. those were on espn usually during like college game days or something like they would right. show like that you know this madden tournament took place or something like that sure. but i don't remember it being like a a huge multi-million dollar industry at that time and then all of a sudden yeah. one day i wake up and here it is yeah, I, I really, like I said, I can't pinpoint that. But with each installation of a game, oh, well, actually, no, 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 no. I can, I can pinpoint it. StarCraft bleeping won. Uh, the original StarCraft okay. was a massive, massive, massive real-time strategy game, very much like Command & Conquer, um, in Korea uh, and just in Asia in general. And they were the first to really go gung-ho into the esports thing with like arenas and putting the players into soundproof rooms so they can't hear what's going on around them. Uh, multi-million dollar contracts. Uh, that's actually where Team Liquid pretty much got it start. Liquid 112, uh, you know, was a, was a StarCraft organization uh, back in the day. And that's where we got our first taste of extreme esports, if you will, the you know the streamers and the lights and the glamour and the interviews and the, okay. the hi hype videos, the intros. That would probably be where I could very, very easily pinpoint it. And then you know, introduction of Evo probably after that. I actually never really thought about that question before, so now I'm gonna have to go do some research. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. I, that's what the conversation I, I think is about, just to kind of help get some perspective. Like, yeah, here is this thing, and here is this outlet. This is on a national stage. Like, you know, and it's so funny. I, I love the way that perceptions change over time. Yeah. You know, like as we evolve as, as a species, as a group of people, as a collective consciousness, whatever, you, you know, you sure. want to call it, you know, we have certain stigmas about different subcultures. Um, you know, one time uh, when, when I was in college, I did a short video for an English class about bowlers. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, I'd always had this image in my mind. I didn't bowl much as a kid. Right. I had this image in my mind that bowlers would be a certain way. And then I get there uh, to the league and from all walks of life, yep. they're uh, passionate about it for one reason or another. Grandpa used to take me all the time and now I'm in this league. Yep. And now, you know, there's a bunch of different types of bowling balls and there's, there's all this strategy that's associated mm -hmm. with it. So when you peel back the onion, I, I mean, you know, certainly you've, you've got to kind of divorce yourself from your your lenses or your bias about what sure. something is. Uh, and then when you immerse yourself in it, you know, here it is, here's this, this thing that's bringing people joy, bringing people value and uh, can be shared with the rest of the world. So yeah. what's next for you, man? What, what are you trying to do <laughs> with the, with the, uh, you said shout casting, not screen casting, right? Hey, you, yeah, it's, it's, it's very much shout casting, but when it's me, I shout <laughs> or scream. I'm sorry. I'm a <laughs> scream caster, but uh, yeah, shout cast. As far as what I have next, man, um, again, I'm going to sound super cheesy here. I have a great career in radio. I really yeah. do. Um, these people have treated me unbelievably well the last handful of years. I have no intentions of going 
anywhere else. As far as Boise State is concerned, same situation. I love the program. I love the people. I've even fallen in love with, you know, the players as far as personality-wise and, and gameplay-wise. Um, I can't wait for them to Mr. Miyagi, my son, into some games of League of Legends, you know, 10 <laughs> years down awesome. the line. Uh, you know, I've already joked about, you know, which college is going to pick him up as the, as the draft arrives, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. What's next is just whatever they hand me. And I know that okay. sounds really weird. Whatever kind of yeah. falls into my lap. I'm reaching out to organizations. You know, I've got my demo and all that, my sizzle reel, as they call it. Um, but right now, like I said, I am farther than I thought I would ever be in both aspects. Um, and so I'm taking a lot of time and just focusing on Twitch, actually. I'm, I'm streaming a lot of things I normally don't. Um, I have my, my League of Legends team, as I like to call them. So I'm playing a lot more semi-competitive League of Legends, uh, but I have to balance that out because, again, the Rage Gamer thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what is next for me, I honestly don't know, man. And so that's, it's whatever they hand me. Uh, you were talking about, you know, you have these preconceived notions. I went in saying I'm going to be nothing but a League of Legends caster. And one day, I was actually, I had to go to Vegas to cast something. They're like, oh, yeah, you ready for the uh, Rocket League stuff? It's like, I'm sorry, the what? I'm like, yeah, you're here for Rocket League too. I'm like, no. No, I'm not. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you are. Sit down. Here's the headset. It's like, oh, son of a bee. Um, and I found out that I'm really good at it. And so that's what, I, that's what is next for me. Whatever shows up. I want to try something new, exciting, and fun. I know I'm safe here. I know I'm safe in the league world, Rocket League. I know I have my college. It's just, you know, whatever's next, man. I will, I will broadcast a cheese fake, Cheesecake Factory menu for you if, you know, that appeals Dude, to I, you at this point. I love that. I love it because at the core, that's what you're really passionate about is, is yeah. you know, putting things in context for people and, and uh, entertaining. And, I make crap and, shine and shine golden, baby. <laughs> that's what's up. So, hey, how do people find you on Twitch, man? What's, what's that like? And, yeah. and, you know, shout out any, anything that people can in, uh, stumble Absolutely, upon Adam on. Well, anywhere in the world other than Twitch, you're going to be looking for Adam on the X. So Facebook, uh, Twit or Twitter, uh, you name it. It's slash Adam on the X or at Adam on the X. As far as my Twitch is concerned, that's twitch.tv slash MC Chizu, C-H-I-Z-U. Uh, I'm on pretty much three days a week. Every other week, you might happen to see my little boy pop in from time to time. I stream everything, like I said, from League of Legends. I'm on a Final Fantasy 14 kick right now. Don't make fun of me, but I, I just, I love, I love that right now. Um, um, and I do a lot of Jackbox, uh, which is kind of like game show stuff if you have never played it. Uh, and you can actually play from your own house. All you need is a cellular device and uh, to have the stream turned on somewhere and you can actually game with me right there. That is awesome, man. And, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to go check out this, uh, this Boise State facility uh, at, yeah. at some point. I'd love, you know, maybe uh, you and I could get together at some point. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe you could walk me around if, uh, if that's possible. Absolutely, man. And for those of you who are curious, it's right there on 301 Capitol Boulevard across from the uh, Grove Hotel. Uh, it doesn't look like an esports arena until you walk in and notice all of the glowing lights uh, and massive computers and stuff. It's a little bit more locked down, but dude, the second that thing is open, we're going. I'll take you. We'll take the boy out. We'll get some games in, throw them on the caster desk, see what happens. It'll be awesome, dude. Oh, that's so cool, man. I, I uh, can't wait for that. So, Hey, once again, I appreciate you being on the podcast oh, today. Thank you, man. I appreciate you sharing your passion with us, the story, your evolution through this thing, and really opening up my eyes to a world that uh, prior to getting on the call with you, man, I, I yeah. have very little knowledge about. So, so thanks for all this. Absolutely. I mean, hey, man, next thing you know, you could be like the podcaster for some team. And now you're making 12, 12 million. You were telling me about your buddy who was a chef for the Gonzu <laughs> Charge. Like the sky is open, man. So you ever have questions, you come find me, you know where to go. All right, Adam. Thanks, brother. Thanks for your time. Not a problem, dude. Thank you.